Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Dare Show podcast where I do reviews. I talk about what's popping. I talk about what's not popping. I talk a little bit of, I get a little nostalgic. Um, and so this week I have for you a burning album review, Patti LaBelle's burning album review. Um, it comes out, the 30th anniversary will be October 1st, but I feel like it's such a good album and it's such a long album. album. I don't want to be talking for so long. So I'm just going to split it up. <clears throat> Forgive me if I keep clearing my throat. I'm going through a sinus situation and oh, I think I'm towards the end of it, hopefully. 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 Um, this album, just listening to it, it's Pat, I think it's Patty's like first like straight through R&B album just straight through all these songs are like really like R&B based gospel based R&B based uh n- not like her other albums I feel like there was like you know some pop songs in her other albums which I've reviewed I've reviewed gems well not gems James wasn't really poppy. Um, We're going into the 90s. And the 90s, Patty... Well, not we're going into. This is her first album of the 90s. And 90s, Patty, she turns 50. Her voice is incredible. Her voice, actually, to me, at the beginning of the 90s, it takes on this, like, new, stronger, powerful aspect to it. It's such a, like... I feel like she has more control over it. She has even more range. She feels like I think I think she's like confident in her voice into the 90s. I don't know what it was. I don't really have like a lot of backstory on Burnin. There's not a whole bunch of like footage or interviews on Patty in general, but especially on like this incredible album. Uh with her incredible voice. It came out in 1991. And to me, this is her most successful album, especially single-wise. single wise. Like, you have multiple singles charting high on the charts. Um, it came in at number nine on the um, R&B charts. Whatever, whatever. Uh, she's, like, bringing in the hits with this one. These Some of these songs she still sings to this day. Uh, and you know, I guess, you know, whatever it charts well, it's a hit. You keep singing it. She starts it off with feels like another one. Oh my goodness. That is such a great, fun song to watch her perform live. There's so many live versions of this one. Uh, she brings like this jazz vocal uh, moment to it. There's a remix that she bases her live ver- well she pretty much performs a live version um now well i think pretty much since because it has like this opening like vocal moment whoa uh she she yeah she opens with that and then like the end she does like this like scatting type thing it's so, <laughs> it's really crazy it's really incredible it's really crazy um, like one of the great performances, well, actually one of the, I think the first performance was from, uh, Arsenio Hall where she, you know, she had Luther, she had Michael McDonald. Um, they did, uh, if you don't know me by now, Luther and her did one only one night. I think it was just like a Patty show that, um, Arsenio was like, let me just give her the moment because this is this is what is popping. I think Arsenio, you know, she was on Arsenio a lot of times in the 90s. And it would just be a Patty show. One time it was just Prince and Patty. No, 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 no. Patty, it was a Prince show, but Patty, I think, was there or something like that. 
Really cool. Really interesting. Well, shout out to Feels Like Another One. And shout out to Big Daddy Kane, who also is on Feels Like Another One. And I was looking at something, and it looked like he wasn't, like, he didn't get the, um, his writing credit. Like, his writing credit, his name isn't on, like, the credits. Uh, I'll have to check the album and see. But... Like on like online on Spotify and on um, Wikipedia, his album isn't there. This is like um, the New Jack Swing era. I'm not really keen on the New Jack Swing situation, so I'm not gonna speak too much about it. But this is like a New Jack Swing album. I mean, song and one of the only like up 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 tempos on this album. Mostly, this album is like mid tempos are like really incredible ballads. Like the next song, which came in at number two on the Billboard, which is on the R&B charts, which is another incredible, classic R&B song. Somebody Loves You, Baby. You know who it is. I think that's the rest of it. Written by um, Bunny Signer, Singler, Sigler. Eddie Lamb Chop, Curry, Bunny wrote tons of songs for Patty. Tons of songs. Um, this song, <laughs> you guys, this song, it's so incredible. I think the ad libs really capture you in. And just Patty going off, you know, that gospel type thing. I think that's what it is. It's definitely that for me. I I'm like, and she, you know, live she has like so much fun singing it. She like sometimes brings somebody. Well, not these days, um, but like back in its uh, original origin days, uh, she would bring somebody on stage. Uh, it's such a classic, and it was such a my favorite. It's, such a favorite for mine. Like I kind of hate it when she doesn't perform it. And I think she went a while for not performing it. Um, but it was like this high energy back then. But now it's sort of like this like mellow. She kind of mixed it up having a mellow every now and then during her set. Um, being it like this mellow song. It's such a classic R&B song. The ad libs is nothing like this song. I feel like certain songs, maybe not even really with Patty. Not I can't even say certain songs sound alike because I feel like most of all of her songs are different. But having like this wide range ca- uh, discography catalog, I'm just like I feel like her music. This song really stands out, and it's like, this song is really, like, not like any other song. I don't know what was going on with this album, but it's just like, this song was not like any other song. And it's like six, five minutes long. My least favorite performance is the one she did um, on her live 1991 album. I mean, um, concert video. Like... I wanted her to go off. She was kind of like tame or something. Maybe she was at the part where she couldn't hear herself. Maybe she couldn't like hear herself really clearly. And you know what's funny? Like, it's funny that some of these entertainers, older entertainers, adapted that ear in thing. One thing I can tell about Patty is she does not make it known that she's wearing one if she is wearing one. And it doesn't look like she's wearing one. Uh, ear monitor. It's very fascinating. Like, in the video, it doesn't look like she's wearing one. But she's, like, pointing in her ear like she can't hear herself. So I'm like, I guess she is wearing one. I, I don't know. It's fascinating. Fascinating. But someone, Somebody Loves You, Baby, I think everybody knows and loves that song. That's a classic Patty song, of course. The next song on the chart. I'm not even, I didn't even, like, I can't even group these, like, songs into categories like I normally do because I'm just like each song is such an amazing song each song each song is such a fantastic moment we have um number three is when you love somebody 
Saving My Love For You. These are like weirdly long titles. <laughs> this one is a little bit mid-tempo. Um, it's like this love song. I feel like she could still sing this one. It has a really nice groove when you love somebody. Like I feel like it's in a, like a vocal range that's not too um, extreme. Like I feel like she could bring this one back and it'll be really good. Something special about this song and something special about this album. They have so many different, um, like, quote unquote, famous black background background singers. Lisa Fisher's on this album, which she shares the um, the Grammy for best album, best R and B album with. Oh, I forgot to say, Burden won best uh, best uh, shares. 1992 uh, shares um no no i think 91 no no it'll be 92 because it came out in october so the Grammys were like the following year which is weird i don't i don't really get that like it's weird i kind no i don't really get it it's weird the time limit of the grammys and the cutoff date and it's just weird um but Lisa Fisher and her share best uh, R&B album. Cute moment, cute speech. Uh, but also, Luther's on the backgrounds on this song. But Luther at the end gives like some like ad libs, and I'm like, Luther, um, why did y'all just make this a duet? I'm saving all my love for you. That's what it's called. Um, do I have any other? I w it would be nice if she did sing this um, live again. But Luther, you could have, y'all could have made this a duet. I, I remember asking Craig Fergus, Craig Seymour, I'm sorry, a uh, musical journalist who I follow on Twitter. He has a, another great, a pretty interesting, cool podcast about music and stuff. But asked him i was like why didn't luther and patty like do more and he was like he felt like luther worked better like behind the scenes and he didn't really want to like he i think he'd rather work behind the scenes than having a duet but i'm like him and patty were like besties and he did songs with aretha and uh, tons of women tons of his idols i'm like why did they ever do an actual song together i guess this is it because He's on it, and I believe he arranged the background vocals, of course. I was wondering, but um, I think the notes read that. So I'm going to take a break and pay some bills. And when I come back, we're going to finish it up with this section of, ooh, I don't do duets. I can't wait to get into that one. Be right back. And no, nobody. She's got her own strategies and techniques of how it works a crowd, but she has enough artistic integrity that she will put herself fully in a performance so that along with the stimulation will come a nourishment. And that nourishment has roots in the spiritual empowerment and spiritual enablement that comes out of the black church. Okay, I'm back to end the section of the burning review. We have a couple more songs. What's funny is when I first, um, I've been wanting to do a podcast for a couple years now, and I had issues with my um, old computer, but I had like started like 
piecing together clips and stuff and recordings and talking about it. Um, and Burning was like one of my first like quote unquote episodes that I wanted to do. Like I said, because it's such an amazing album. I Don't Do Duets is the next song, which is a a um, duet with Gladys Knight. And here we go again. I did it again. It's such an amazing song. I think it's a cover. I'm not really sure. Something gives me cover vibes about it, but I'm not really sure. This is such a perfect song for both of the women, both women at this time. It's such an adult, grown conversation, um, adult lyrics, nothing like Kitty. It's very simple and adult. I love it. Um, the song is really just like reflecting on this like relationship of... Uh, I need more of you putting like an effort in it because I'm always doing all these things and it's such a great song they harmonize impeccably in this like you kind of don't think Gladys and Patty but I feel like Patty can kind of sing with anybody Patty does great duets um, but you know uh, Patty Patty could go low Patty, there's like this clip of them doing, um, at, I think like the Essence Awards, them singing uh, the Boy Shaman songs, Patty, Luther, and Gladys. And Patty hits the low note. Patty's taking the low note. She's not hitting the high notes. Um, but Patty can go low. Um, yeah, they complement each other 100%. It's such a great, it's such a great song. We were, we were privy to information that at their verses, which is like a year ago now, that they did, they were supposed to do I Don't Do Duets at the end, but somehow Miss, what's her name? Dionne Warwick, she came in and cut up, and now we don't have that moment, which I'm really sad about because this is really one of my favorite songs off of the album. Uh... And also, Patty, this past weekend, or yesterday, Sunday, or Sunday or Saturday, one of those days, Patty and Gladys headlined, co-headlined a show in Georgia. And as far as I know, there's no, like, there's not actually not a lot of footage so far from the show, and let alone, uh, I do do, I don't do duets. But, yeah, I'm sad that they didn't get, like a like, a chance to do this. The Bell re- reunited on here. We have Michael McDonald. We have Daddy Big Daddy Kane. We have, uh, but we don't have a Gladys and Patty moment, unfortunately. The next song, Temptation, uh, another like boppity bop on here. We love Temptation. It's such a fun, funky. Song is by written by Martika, um, and I believe this is a cover from Martika. And the song is on Martika's Kitchen. I'm not sure who Martika is. Uh, I think she had some good success in the 80s. Shout out if you know who Martika is. It's like one of the other only up tempo, up up tempo songs. Um, this is a special bonus track on the like most recent albums being put out i don't think i believe it wasn't necessarily on the temptation but she talked about temptation so i'm very confused because she talked about it in an interview uh there's like two burning interviews unfortunately and she doesn't talk about like the background of what's going on Oh, these interviewers, those interviewers. I mean, they were fun interviews but like one of them she didn't really talk about it but whatever um, the next song, When You've Been Blessed, right? When You've Been Blessed, came in at number four on the, this was her last, yeah, I think her last single off of this album. It came in at number four. Oh, let's backtrack a second. Video-wise, since, since we're do- almost done with the um, singles. Feels like another one video was just like, you know, the typical... 
concert compilation video. Eh. <laughs> These videos are horrible, actually. Let me just say that. These videos are horrible. It's like there was like no budget for the videos. Uh, MCA, I'm talking to you. Somebody loves you, baby. That video was like, uh, what's the word? B footage from her performing at like the Apollo. Or well, not at the Apollo, but she was in the Apollo theater. Uh, yeah, with that huge wig on and that pink. It was just like her tour. Co- no budget. Secondly, we have when you've been blessed. This video was like out in like LA, random clips of choirs, random clips of, you know, the streets in the 90s, Patty, what was she wearing? I don't remember, but I think it was like another tour costume, another low budget low wig <laughs> video. I didn't, the video is for Brandon was horrible were horrible um but when you've been blessed this song came in at number four on the r&b charts which is like really incredible um but you know this is back in like in the 90s where and like even the early like 2000s and early 2010s where ballads could be on could chart and be number one gospel type songs or gospel song gospel songs were integral uh crossed over and in the top tens and hundreds or whatever 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 you know what i'm saying uh but yeah this charted on number four so i'm like this got exposure top five exposure top 10 exposure top 10 is really good top five really really good uh this is a you know it's like a intertwined modern quote-unquote modern gospel song uh, i believe patty has a writing credit on here nona hendrix also has a writing credit on here also you know nona wrote i think she wrote on this one and she wrote on next week i will get to um let it go let it go what's this song called Jeez, louise gotta let it go uh, not release 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 yourself Excuse me. Um. So yeah, she had a writing, uh, writing credit in this. Her ad libs at the end, very gospel, very classic. Patty, I think one of my favorite moments, certain live versions, is from the. I guess she. I think she had two days at the Apollo. One of them. They mixed and mashed and made an album. One of them was released. One of them wasn't. One of them was on this um, documentary called From Gospel to... Wait. From R&B to... Wait. Oh, crap. Gospel to something. Gospel to soul. Gospel to something. Uh, it's on my YouTube page. You can go check it out. Uh, it'll be in like the titles for like Patti LaBelle Rare Audio, Audio or something like that. And... It's really incredible. Like the music kind of stops and she's just singing. She the she gives a mic to like Debbie. Debbie singing. It's really good. Um, but like I said, I've said this a couple times. Patty Estate, can you guys please release? First of all, we need another live Patty album. Hopefully, she's already recorded that. We just don't know. I'm not playing. Secondly, can you release the other audio from this 1991 concert? Jeez Louise, give us something. You know, um, during the bridge, she does that, like, vocal scale that she does that I don't think a lot of people are successful at, like she is. But, you know, she does that over the rainbow. And, you know, she does that in this song, which is really cool. Um, I think that's it for Burning. Next week, we're going to get into my absolute favorite songs. Uh, and it gets a little retrospective lyrically wise we get a couple more duets we get LaBelle yeah shout out to this uh, review I hope you enjoyed it I'll be back next week for the second part 
And on that note, go listen to Burning. Uh, out of these songs, like I said, I don't do duets. It's my favorite. And Somebody Loves You Baby is my favorite. But I think right now, I don't do duets will be a top favorite. So on that note, I'll be back next week. See you then.